So it's Friday afternoon and I'm at work. I get Friday afternoons off so I can hang around and work on my own projects. So I've got the this power supply here on the, as Abe calls it, the healing bench. Uh, so, what modifications did I say I was going to do to it? Well, I said I was going to swap the two caps around on the input and output, which I have now done. So these low ESR in quotes capacitors are now reversed. So you can see the 1000 microfarad 35 volt is this side. Nope that side which is the output side now so they're the correct way around so we're going to add a capacitor there on the app on the chip that's the bypass capacitor for the internal voltage regulator if you remember I was talking about that that's missing uh, we're going to add a resistor in parallel with this capacitor here in the feedback network of this op amp and while we're there, we might swap this op amp out. It's an LM358, which is not a good op amp, and I've got some on the shelf here which are a lot better, so I might give that a go as well. I'll be right back. Now, the actual value of resistor we put across the output is pretty non-critical. It just wants to be fairly high, so the op amp has plenty of gain. I'm probably going to go with 100k and just see how the performance is. I might tune the circuit a bit if 100k turns out to be no good. So here we are, 100k. Service mount 0402, which I'm pretty sure that's no for it. Uh, actually, that might be no 603. Let's compare the size. You can see that. Yeah, that's definitely no 603. Let's get the 0603 resistors. So 100k is missing. So let's go with 110. This is not precise electronics. Okay, so. Compare the size again, so I can get it framed right. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, so let's have one of these resistors out of here. These are very difficult to do one-handed. Let's try it right-handed. There we are. God bless, we messed them up. Let's get some tweezers. Where might we find tweezers? Tweezers, tweezers. That'll do. So, resistor, board. Be right back. Okay, so soldered on there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. So we can get that to focus. There we go. So I'll just piggyback the resistor right on top of the capacitor. I still want the capacitance there because it dampens the AC response of the circuit, which I don't particularly want to be uh, too high, high, too reactive to high frequency changes, or it's uh, going to be prone to oscillate in step load conditions. So time to add a capacitor to the output. So. This will do. Let's see if there's something in here which will be suitable. What have we got in here then? Uh, the data sheet calls for one microfarad. We might not have any one microfarads in here. Nope. Oh well, let's find something else. There somewhere. Hmm. Let's see what we can find. Nope. Nope. Aha. Here we go. One of Probably a little bit overkill on the voltage rating, but uh, never mind. That's more one in there. What's that? So that's 
45 volts. That'll do. Be right back. Possibly not my best ever soldering job, but it'll do. You can see I've cracked the ceramic case of that slightly where the leads go in, but I don't need this thing to last any period of time. Okay, so those are those mods done. The last one to think about is a new op amp. So, let's go for a rummage. In there. Yeah. See you soon. So I cheated a little bit. I went and looked on the parts database, but this is a pretty good op amp. What have we got here? This is an LT2178 CS8, which is overkill. Just one of these costs more than that whole power supply, but let's give it a go. That one doesn't look like it's doing very much. It's out of its tube. It's stuck to the tape, so I very much doubt anyone's going to miss that. So let's solder it on. I'm going to find your clamp stand so that you can watch what I'm doing here because I'm going to use some of this to get the old op amp off. So I'm back, I've got the camera in a clamp so I can use both hands. Time to get this chip off. So, step one, some flux. Always step one is flux. Got some flux around those pins, soldering iron going. I'm using a Metcal MX5200. Not my favourite soldering iron, but it's what the company had. So let's just run that flux in a little bit, like so. Let's now come in with a uh, stick of our, of our chip quick and flood this chip. Like so. We're looking, there we are. We're looking for it to bridge across all the pins like that. Do the same on the other side. It takes a bit to get it to stick. That's why we use so much flux and such an aggressive flux we're actually using this, this is Chipquick's own flux um, it's their recommended one for use for this purpose and it does work very well now that that's flooded on both sides what we're going to do is get our tweezers ready and we're going to do a little practice run because we only really get one shot at this so we're going to hold the, the chip and we're going to come in with the iron like this we're going to come in with the iron like this and the good thing about this solder is it stays molten for about 10 seconds, which gives us time to get the chip off the board. So let's do it. We're going to heat that side. Oh no, solder's come off. There we go. And we'll heat this side, and that's it. Chip's gone. And it leaves the chip in a reasonable state as well. That needs a bit of cleanup, but it's pretty good. Okay, so now we've got a bit of a messy board. We're going to come in with some solder braid and clean that up. solder braid and we'll clean that up. So, just trim the end of that. So, here's some solder braid. Slightly used. Let's cut that bit off. Here's some solder braid. And this is just solder wick. Bring the solder braid in. And when it gets saturated like that, you just cut it off. Or it's going to cause some more problems. Again. Let it saturate. That's got the bulk of the solder off. Now we're going to go in again with some clean, fresh solder braid and really get every last bit of that chip quick off this board because we don't want it on there when the board is in use because it melts so easily. So those are clean pads ready to receive a new chip. We've got a pin one indicator here that tells us where pin one goes. So what I'm going to do is tin one pad, just one, like so. I'm also going to give it a little bit of a clean with some isopropanol to get rid of the worst of that chip quick flux. So it'll be hard to clean from under the chip once we're done. So we'll go in with a little squirt bottle, squirt a bit of isopropanol on there. This stuff does a pretty good job of cleaning up chip quick. Just dab that off the board and we're good to go. That's fairly clean. It's tinned, so we'll come in with our chip. I'm not really observing anti-static precautions here. I should be, shouldn't I? Put one of these on. And okay, this chip's eight pounds. These chips are eight pounds each. And right, so we get our orientation correct. 
Let me just double check that that is the correct orientation. Yeah. So this this package in typical LT fashion is quite hard to identify pin one. But if you look end on like this, you might be able to see that there's a chamfer on the edge of the package on this side just here, and that indicates that pin one is on this side. So we know. Have I got that right? Uh, yeah, so there's a chamfer on this side of the package just here, which means that that is pin 1. So, let's put it down in the correct orientation, and I'm going to rotate the work so that I can get tweezers on one side, like so, and solder iron on the other, and what we're going to do is tack it down by one leg, like so. Oh, it's not quite in the middle, so let's get it in the middle of the pads. There we go. Press down in the middle of the chip with the with the tweezers. Remelt that pin again to make sure that the package is sitting flush. And now we're going to go in and solder the rest of the pins. I'm going to start on the top row, in the furthest opposite corner pin. And this is why I hate the soldering iron hasn't got the precision you need or the heat where you need it right in the tip. It's beefy, it can heat a ground plane in seconds, but it hasn't got the actual precision you need for this kind of work. And there are soldering irons out there which can do both. Um, I've used a JBC soldering station and I've used a Weller soldering station. They're really flagship ones, which are both actually cheaper than this Metcal. And um, they both do a much better job of the precision work, and I find they're just as good at the high power stuff, so I'm not a fan of the Metcal. It really shines in tightly controlled processes where you can lock down which tip was in use at which time because the, the temperature is intrinsic in the tip, but. Unfortunately for this kind of work, they're not ideal, in my opinion. And this is a prototype in shop, so there's no reason to have a Metcal other than just the engineer who bought it happened to like them. Okay, that's been swapped out for a new op-amp, doubling the cost of the total power supply. But anyway, let's just trim off a few of these leads. You notice I'm putting my finger over the cutters. That's because I'm not wearing eye protection. And these little legs will ping right off and get you straight in the eye every time. If you don't, I'd rather it pinged into my finger than my eye. A generous little splash of isopropanol to make sure it's nice and clean. It's just denatured alcohol. Anyone who knows it by a different term. Not exactly a lint-free cloth, is it? Right, there we go. It's time to reassemble the uh, heat sinks. I'll be back.